Hi, I'm Travis and you're watching Curious Tangents and you were supposed to be watching this video a long time ago, but you're not because I got distracted. Granted, I got distracted with a bunch of other cool things that I'm making for YouTube, but still I got distracted, which is a really weird thing when you think about it because being distracted, especially being easily distracted, doesn't really seem to be beneficial, yet almost everyone is distractible. So why? But first, what even is a distraction? I mean, we all intuitively know what distracting is. Playing on Facebook when you're supposed to be doing your work is clearly a distraction, but we oftentimes describe distraction as the lack of attention or focus, but that's not really the case. People focus on Facebook. Nir Eyal, author of Indistractable, would describe distraction as action without intent. Lots of people describe attention, especially spatial attention, their, the ability to pay attention to a specific object, as a spotlight that you shine on a particular thing. And after you've been shining that light for a while, it gets a little bit dimmer. This is you approaching the end of your attention span. Oftentimes, we think of attention as a span, but I find that mental model to be just a little bit in sufficient. A better one, in my opinion, is the attentional space. So imagine you're going to spend an hour. Jesus Christ. Now imagine you're going to spend an hour reading this math textbook. And imagine you're going to spend the next hour playing your favorite video game. Now it's probably safe to say that the vast majority of you can pay attention to the video game for a longer period of time than you can pay attention to this. And that's not because your attention span is short, but because the video game takes up more of your attentional space. Video games produce light and sound and you have to interact and react to them and you need hand-eye coordination to play them properly. Video games require more sensory information than math books. From this perspective, this math book is the equivalent of filling up a glass half full with water, whereas a video game is like drowning your entire room in it. Now, different people have different sized and different shaped attentional spaces, and these people who have smaller attentional spaces can pay attention to more mundane and boring things. However, you can shrink the size of your attentional space. This is one of the purposes of mindfulness meditation. When a person is sitting down focusing on only their breath, it's pretty much the most mundane thing that they can do, and so their attentional space tends to adjust more to simple things. This is demonstrated in that people who meditate have on average longer attention spans. You can also increase your attentional space by doing things that constantly lead to sensory overload. You then become desensitized, meaning that you'll need more and more stimulation to even notice something. Your brain has a limited amount of processing space. While we like to think that our brains are machines that can handle anything, our ability to process the world is limited, and thus reality is equal to more than perception. This is what's known as preferential processing, or attention. However, there is another deeper layer in that you can't process all of reality, but that's another video. But to get back to the premise of this video, why do distractions exist is really rather simple. It's not because we created smartphones or anything of the sort. Imagine that you and your ancient hunter-gatherer friend are hunting in the forest. Let's say you're hunting deer, and you are incredibly focused, and your friend is less so. And as you're honing in on that deer, your friend hears a rustle in the bushes just to the side of you. And you don't hear it because you're so focused on that deer. And you let go of this deer, and you realize your friend already ran off as the tiger is eating you. We're not the descendants of the guy who was super focused and got the deer. We're the descendants of the guy who got distracted and ran away and lived to produce another day. You weren't just born distracted, you evolved that way. And while focus is a great and while focus is a great thing to have in our modern day society, distractibility is not something to beat yourself up about. People with ADHD are three times as likely to start a business as those who do not have it. And in the aerial tribes of East Africa, those who were the best hunters were those who had genes associated with ADHD. I'm reminded of something that Hank Green said on TikTok, which is that maybe there is no smart or dumb, only well-adjusted for the environment that one happens to be born into. 
Hi, I've got two new YouTube series starting very soon. The first one's called The Invention Of, where I'm going to discuss the invention of different things, some more mundane than others, but how those things impacted the broader world. And you can vote on what things I talk about over on my Discord server. The other series is called Tangents, where I answer a bunch of ridiculous questions and debunk some myths. 100% of which will be provided by you guys. I've already got some. And if you want to contribute, you can either comment directly below this video or any of my videos, or you can go over to my Discord server and click on the channel Ridiculous Questions, which is a server that I made specifically for this series of videos. It should be really fun. And thank you for watching. Also, quick PS. Attentional Attentional space is not a term in psychology, it's just my mental model for thinking of the terms related to attention and attention spans. Please don't write that on a psychology test, it's just my representation of the information. Bye.